there are things happening that you won't hear about on CNN. Yeah. There are children every day, there are children that are having experiences with orbs. I won't say the name of our work, but we had an instance a couple months ago where we saw an orb on the playground. Oh, really? And you should have heard the conversations that were had about what Multiple it could be. people saw this. And you think, yes. And you think about the media and how they play into it. We've got so many UFO movies out there that when a group of children or adults sees a light in the sky, the first thing they're going to think is, oh, E.T., the UFOs are here. So so it how many, I'm just here. curious, I'm not going to ask any specific questions, but what? how many people saw this thing? I would say about 20. Stacey Jones is an author and experiencer of the UFO phenomenon. She is also a Christian who has made it her goal to expose the lies of these strange events that some call normal. Today we will talk to Stacey about her strange life to get a better understanding of what is to come as this demonic agenda moves closer to our reality in the very near future. The first half of this video is devoted to her story. The second half we will get into the truth about how to overcome it. Thanks for being on the show, Stacy. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. I was born in the late 70s in the Bay Area to two uh, hardworking parents. Um, I was the oldest of five siblings. Had a very normal, secular type childhood. My parents didn't really affiliate with any particular church, so I wasn't really introduced to the church until later. Uh, we did say grace at dinner. So as far as spiritual upbringing, uh, we said grace. I knew that there was a God because I was taught there was a God. We should be thankful. I think my parents were initially kind of seekers and were involved in many different denominations and just kind of feeling things out, but they didn't ever force us to go with them. Uh, much later, maybe around adolescence, I was invited to meet with believers at by neighbors and friends. They would invite me and I would go alone. I'd leave my siblings at play. And I was really interested in what the church had to say. Uh, I would listen intently. I was an avid reader, very, did very well in school. I was in honors classes and um, kept up pretty well. So I enjoyed listening to everything that they had to tell me about the Bible, about the love of God. Um, I would say I probably tried to read the entire Bible in a few nights because that's how into it I was. But I had no idea about the spiritual realm initially. And I think many believers don't have much experience with it. We usually know what we're taught because we're brought up in a certain worldview or, you know, exposed to it. Uh, perhaps God has his interesting ways of pulling us in, however he does so. But I didn't know anything about it. And boy, was my world rocked when I started to experience things from, we'll just call it the supernatural realm. And I had no interest in UFOs. I'll say that outrightly. I've never been into science fiction. I enjoyed drama. <laughs> I was a musician and band. I was first chair clarinet. So my interests were playing outside as a child, doing well in school. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, but I was taught that education is important. I have an uncle with a PhD and my mother's side is fairly well-educated. Father is from Virginia. He's of African-American descent and grew up on a farm. He tells me that he hunted at the age of five, drove a tractor on his own. So he was from slightly more humble beginnings. Um, and I'll just say I was a normal child growing up in California. Until about the age of 15, when the groups that I started to meet with, believers, got really heavily into talking of spiritual warfare. I started to hear things about the demonic realm and not to get too dark, but I always said, okay, there's a devil. <laughs> there's a dark side. I know that God is love. He's for everyone. I'm not going to worry about all this dark side stuff. Yes, it's real, but it just wasn't as real <laughs> as we'll say the hand in front of my face until much later. So I'll kind of skip forward to, I'm gonna skip forward and then go back if you don't mind. We'll cut to post-college. I got married a couple of years after I graduated. I began teaching middle school back in 2000. And once I moved to Texas, I thought the people here were really kind. They called me ma'am. I remember one of the first school board meetings, they opened with a prayer and I thought, wow, that's really interesting. We wouldn't do that in California. <laughs> so. Uh, moving here was kind of refreshing because they honored God in most of the places that I went to. I was surrounded by other believers everywhere. There are churches on every corner in Texas. So you get quite a bit of spirituality when you're here. Um, it is the Bible Belt. 
Uh, so I kind of felt like I was at home because by that time I'd already become a believer around the age of 14 or 15. I'd, con- I'd accepted Christ. I wasn't baptized until much later. So I had faith in Christ. And then maybe I'd say around age 20, 22, I started to read some verses that made me think, you know what, I should be getting baptized because it would be a logical next step. And most would think, wouldn't that come right after you accepted Christ? But I, not having the uh, parental upbringing in a church, I kind of had to put the pieces together myself and make sense of things. So I figured, you know what? Um, it's what we should do. So I went under the water, came up. And then soon after I had two children (laughs) a year later. So things just happened. We'll say day by day, I had a change constantly. I moved from California to Texas, um, started my career. Well, before before you go into your career, I'm just kind of curious. So we understand your beliefs better. Was there a specific church you were baptized into? That's a great question. It was actually a non-denominational church is what it espoused itself to be. It was a group of believers that met, but I later found out they were more affiliated or aligned with um, somewhat with Church of Christ. So they put a pretty heavy emphasis on baptism. And I was always under the impression that baptism was not essential for salvation, um, that faith in Christ was the important cornerstone. And so in my mind, going into the water was a way of proving that I had faith in Christ. I was doing what I should do. <laughs> showing outwardly what I had the inward belief upon. And it was just non-denominational is the easiest way to put it initially. So career was moving full speed. I had two young children. I decided not to stop my career. I would keep going and working at the same time as being mom. So I was pretty busy. And the first really strange incident that happened was in 2008. I was in my 30s by the time. I had a one-year-old and two-year-old. We were driving home one night. It was November 29th, I believe. And I was just trying to get them home as quickly as possible from an in-law's house because it was dark. But I noticed something in the car as I was looking out the window that looked very unusual. It was eight white orbs, almost like basketball sized, but maybe 300 meters away. And the way they moved was perplexing because I had taught math and science in middle school. So I knew what drones were. I knew about holography, lasers, all that. And so I'm sitting here thinking, what is this? It's not moving like anything mechanical. It's very organic, almost like birds would move just floating through the sky. So being the curious type, I decided I would follow it in the car. Uh, I'm sure if my husband were with me, he'd probably say, keep driving. (laughs) He had no interest (laughs) in it, but I'm very curious when I want to know the answer to something, I'm almost relentless and I don't stop until I get it. So I drove toward the orbs and after a short while, they merged into one light. So the eight became one, almost like a disco ball because they were glittering, throwing off colors. And shortly after, I'd say about 60 seconds later, the disco ball flattened into a pink disc. So I'm just driving slowly, making sure I'm watching the road. My eyes are on this object. And I finally pulled over into what was then Tinseltown movie theater because it had, this thing had migrated from across the city to right above the movie theater and then slightly to the left, right above the parking lot. So I thought, great, I can get an even better view and see what this is. So I drove into the parking lot of the movie theater. And since I have a sense of humor, I rolled the window down and shouted out, it's a UFO. Cause I saw some teenagers walking. I thought maybe I'll get them to laugh. Maybe they'll look at it. They were oblivious. They didn't listen. I was driving. So I thought, okay, they're not interested. They looked as if they were coming from a prom, very dressed up. There was one gentleman standing at the corner of the movie theater. He had on a black trench coat. I thought that was odd because he was staring at it and not moving, <laughs> just staring. So, so, so pause, pause for just a moment. I'm, I'm, yeah. I had a couple questions. So sure. out of my research and out of talking to a few different people that, that I've talked to about this, a lot of times, again, not saying this happened to you, a lot of times people bring this upon themselves. Like they, they play with... Um, a Ouija board or they do something that is that follows them home like you've heard about Skinwalker Ranch I don't maybe you have maybe you haven't I've heard a little about it yes very little often there's it's been out on the uh, official media that the FBI or the government workers that are working there they go there they don't experience anything but they go home and something something follows them home and they start seeing things directly after that and so I'm, I'm kind of wondering, and this is just a question for you. Do you remember anything spiritual in your life um, up to that point before you saw these things? Spirituality wise, as far as opening a door that might've invited that type of activity. And I never played with Ouija boards. I was taught they were evil and that was not allowed in the eyes of God, because then you were delving into the demonic realm and could be contacting spirits, could be dangerous. So I never did that. 
Um, before entering any church, I kind of thought it was all hogwash. It's just a game that kids play. But once I'd been taught the Bible, I thought, okay, this is an area I won't go into. I put it right in the box with witchcraft and other things that are outlawed. So I wouldn't say that I necessarily directly opened a door through any spiritual practices. Now, as a teen, I wouldn't say that I was completely pure either. Although I believed in Christ, I was a bit backslidden in my early, I'd say 19, 20 years old. I'd kind of fallen away in a sense. And that could have very well been a hook. <laughs> Okay, she's a little, she's fallen back a bit. She's taken her focus off of Christ. This would be the perfect time to get her. I don't know that that was necessarily the mindset of the enemy. But I do remember around age 19, I was in the backyard and I was praying, actually. I said to God, I would love to see something from the other side, but don't make it scary. Huh, now, I don't know whether I remember that distinctly thinking, okay, I just, I, I was kind of enthralled by the thought of seeing something and I don't know why. But I'd been looking up at the stars and I thought I'd love to see something weird. And so I often think back to that and I have this battle in the mind that says, well, it could very well be the enemy presenting me with something to deceive me. Could be God opening my eyes to the spiritual realm so that I can educate others. I'm really not sure, to be honest. Sure. But as far as a door that might have opened it, I did have sin in my life that I'll admit openly. And that could be called a door no matter what the sin is. Anytime sure. that we're disobedience to God, we legally are giving Satan more ground to have his way, so to speak. So I guess we could make that argument. Um, but other than that, there was no horoscope reading, Ouija boards, nothing of the sort. So it, could it was have been, kind of- It could have but, been that you you, um, you just followed this thing. I mean, the fact that you were interested in it, hey, you know, I, there was a, in, in fact, there was a, um, there's a well-known uh, former occultist that became Christian. And he said that, um, he'd often be antagonized be, by these things. Things would fly across the room and he would have people over and, he, and they would see it too. And they, he would say, you know what? Don't, don't notice it. Don't talk about it. It goes away. Or That's not, interesting you say that. Afterward, I'm sorry to interrupt, but afterward, no. there was some activity that I was lured into because of it. So it could have been the bait that brought me exactly where the enemy wanted me. I'll kind of begin with that and then explain what I mean. So to go back to the story, I was sitting in the car looking up at this pink disc swimming with color thinking, what is this? It's, it doesn't look physical. It almost looks like it's a consciousness of some sort, hmm. <laughs> like something you would see in a sci-fi movie. Um, I couldn't place it in any box that I had. And it was fairly close up. I'd say maybe seven, eight stories high, close enough where I could study it. And it was from my vantage point, it would be larger than a car. So I'm looking up at this elliptical portal, wow. pink, swimming with color, with a green perimeter, and just wondering, what is it? And in the back seat, my son, who was around one at the time, pointed out and said, ship. And I thought, okay, I don't let my kids watch TV. So one no, years old. I, exactly. I don't know if dad had maybe had, he, they'd seen something with dad was watching, but I thought, why is he calling that a ship? Maybe he's seen something with someone else and he knows that it could be called the spaceship because it's flying and it's not a plane. Huh. I wasn't sure. But I thought that was awkward. Uh, and I decided, you know what, I need to go home and tell my husband about this so he can come see it. <laughs> so I got home, told my husband, I've just seen something weird. I and mean, he, of course, is staring at me. He's very practical. <laughs> and I said, I want you to come back and see it with me. So we hopped into the car, went back, and it was gone. Yeah. So I became kind of the butt of his jokes. Oh, did you see something else today? But the interesting thing was I stayed up for almost two days straight, no sleep. Wow. And mind you, I had a job to go to the next day, young children to raise, researching this. So this is where I kind of started to get into some areas that I probably shouldn't have delved into because as soon as I started to look up information about UFOs, it took me into all kinds of other arenas, new age, angelic uh, sightings. It was kind of over the weekend, two days. I had to look through every internet website, look up people that might have seen it. I, I ended up finding a photographer, a woman who lives here in Dallas, who says that she saw the same thing. Huh. But I was also a bit thrown because I remembered when I was around 15, I went with a neighbor to a very charismatic church and they had someone that was what they deemed a prophet who told me that I'd be seeing something years later oh. in the sky. So I'm thinking, okay, is this prophetic? Now, some would say that whole prophecy issue was demonic, but it was very confusing to me because I had to make a distinction between what was the thing? Was it of God? Was it not of God? Where do I fit it? And I knew it wasn't physical. 
And that probably would have been the end of it had that been the only one I saw. But then it became more intense and I started seeing them regularly in my own backyard. So I would be sitting out in the backyard, lying on a hammock, and I would see white orbs come down to tree level. Energy orbs uh, is what I called them back then. And my daughter and I, this is years later, after I'd been to conferences and met other people that had seen them, and I'll get into some of the conversations we had, but my daughter and I were sitting on a blanket when she was in elementary school. And I remember I prayed, Father, would you please show her something from the supernatural realm? Because I thought this could definitely be supernatural. There's no explanation for it. They're not physical craft. They're coming down to my level. They essentially communicate with you. And I'll get into how I know that. They can send messages. So I had the impression that they were spiritual entities Hmm. and the reason I thought that is the minute we stopped praying he said or I said can you show her something from the supernatural realm in Jesus name amen I wanted her to kind of be aware of that side of reality Uh, we immediately saw a pink orb float over our heads so we're both excited we're screaming pointing at it so she knew (laughs) the reality of what I'd seen but she also started to have some interesting experiences, kind of like some that I had during incidences of sleep paralysis, which I had from maybe age 20 onward, Interesting. where I'd be sleeping. And I always thought sleep paralysis was completely natural. I still kind of think it could be natural. I'd be lying down in whatever sleeping position. And then while in a state of, you know, in between sleep and wakefulness, I would always have a black sh- shadowy being hovering over me. Um, I could feel a presence of evil. There was one incidence where this being began to choke me and I could feel the cold rising up from my feet to my legs, chest. And I was thinking if it gets any closer to my brain, I'm dead. So these black shadowy beings, I didn't think much of them, but I remember that because I'd had some biblical training, if it were something demonic and not physical, I could rebuke it I could tell it to get behind me I could you know say the blood of Christ do something to let it know that I, w- I belong to Christ to put it in its place so I would say blood of Jesus and the thing would automatically disappear ah. what makes it even more interesting this is where it gets a little past the line of natural into crazy <laughs> because I am a realist I do think some of the things that have happened would be defined as crazy in the western mind But I was in a room one day with children. I won't say where I work because I don't want to get myself into any trouble, but their views don't necessarily align with mine. Mm -hmm. I'll say that I've always been an educator. A child said to me, a very quiet child, there's a spirit behind you. And this is one that was serious, hardworking student. I thought, okay, that's interesting. Thank you so much for sharing with me. (laughs) It was a public school, so I couldn't get into, you know, matters of spiritual nature. I just had to thank her for sharing. Thank you for telling me. I appreciate it. And she said, my mom sees them all the time, but I saw one right behind you. Oh. One of the boys brought a huge cross. I'm talking over a foot high. Is this because <laughs> of this cross. incident or did he just have to bring it? This was, I don't see, this was, uh, this was so long ago that it's hard to put the pieces back together. It was in that same time frame. It could have been the same day, but he brought <laughs> a huge cross, placed it on his desk and said, we need this. Oh, wow. Several of the kids had seen, they said they'd seen something. And I said, well, I can't put it on my desk because, you know, being it's a public school, we have to respect all worldviews. And I don't want children who maybe aren't of that belief system to feel like only that belief system is welcome here. But you can keep it on your desk if you want. It's taking up quite a bit of space. <laughs> so he finally put it away. But as I escorted the children out of the room, I saw something black rise out of his desk. So I oh. saw what they saw. And this is the first time I'd ever seen something from the spiritual realm. And I've never done drugs. I've always been terrified of drugs. I don't think I partook of alcohol until my thirties, but I was to say the least shocked because I'd never seen something from that realm. And I knew it wasn't a floater. I'd watched a full figured entity rise out of this student's desk, walk slowly across the room. He was wearing a black tuxedo. Now having read my Bible enough times, I knew that this could be what new agers or occultists would call a ghost. I immediately thought it's probably not a ghost because it's usually a demon posing as a person Mm -hmm. to deceive people into thinking that all spirits are in a certain realm, we're all headed toward the light. So maybe this thing's trying to trick me. I just watched it walk across the room and I was actually pretty pleased that I could see that because I'd already seen the UFOs. Now I was seeing this. So in my mind, I was thinking, okay, maybe the Lord's revealing the spiritual realm to me so that I can make others more aware of it. So I wasn't uncomfortable with it. I wasn't afraid of it. I have friends because I'm the type that tells people when something happens, I told everyone I knew what I saw 
when I'd seen the UFO, I told the principal that I had at that time what I saw. And I pretty much am very open about things I see because I feel like if I see it, perhaps they might see it one day. And if we have open communication about things that are happening, sure. uh, it could help one. Keeping it a secret might make me look more sane. <laughs> My husband would say that the <laughs> easier you look. But I'm very much of the mindset that open communications and communication is important. Um, I don't see a need to hide it. And I'm not really concerned about whether people think I'm crazy because I know I'm not. <laughs> Although the things that have happened are definitely not fitting with the Western viewpoint of what's naturalistic or normal. So I had some strange things start to happen. That was the first of a very strange event when I saw the spirit walk across the room. And and so did he go through a wall? Was he translucent? He walked, was he kind of... Uh, fuzzy <laughs> you know like hard to see what would you what you see almost like as sharp and well defined as a shadow would be if you're standing out and you see your shadow very sharp but at the same time not completely opaque somewhat transparent walked slowly right through the wall we had projectors um, projection screens he walked through the projection screen right into the next room and I just sat there, jaw dropped and thought, this is really interesting. I'm seeing something strange again because I've been seeing UFOs. I thought, now here's phase two. Now I'm seeing spirits. <laughs> What's going on? I'd been to a few conferences where I met with people um, who had seen UFOs here in Texas. They would have little flyers. If you've seen a UFO, because there was a big sighting in Stephenville around 2008. And I thought, you know what? There are other people that are seeing this strange thing that I'm seeing. I'd like to go meet them and see what they have to say. So I went to a convention and... The part that troubled me was most of the people I met said that they'd been seeing UFOs, orbs, things flying through the sky, spirits, since they were children, hmm, but sure. that most of them were bad experiences. They talked about abduction, and one woman even drew pictures of different alien races. So I got into a conversation with her, and I remember asking, you know, do you think these could be demonic hmm, entities sure. that are trying to harass you? And she said, no, I think they're aliens from another planet. Wow. So I'd also seen a woman who was a self-proclaimed psychic because you get a lot of people at these conventions, not yeah. necessarily Christians, but people from a wide variety of worldviews. And I happened to sit next to her at a barbecue place that we went to. I didn't eat anything because I was afraid they could have laced it with something. I'm thinking I'm around people that are not <laughs> typical. I need and to now we're going to have a show. <laughs> Everyone's going to see yeah. the same thing. <laughs> I know I should eat anything put before me with Thanksgiving and prayer, but I'm not sure how comfortable I am sitting around all these people that have these stories and eating what they're eating. So I just kind of sat and listened. Um, but she had her son with her who was an adult male. And I was telling him the story of what I'd seen. And he asked me how I knew that there were eight orbs. And I told him I counted the eight and told my story. And I turned to his mother, who was a psychic, not a fake one, but one of the actual ones that makes a living. And I asked her when she started having the ability to, you know, be able to read people psychically or tell their future. And she told me in her 20s, she went to bed one night and a ball of electricity shocked her. And she began having visions and hearing a voice that would kind of give her information. But as she started talking, I, in the back of my mind, was praying, Lord, will you please reveal the truth to her? Because I had the impression that psychic ability could be related to demonic information being given because of the story in the Bible of the girl who was able to tell the future. And she was given that information by demons. Right. So I thought this woman could very well be deceived. She's deceived. Uh, and I would love for her to be able to understand that or at least hear my point of view and hear me out. So I'm praying in the back of my mind as she's speaking. She's sitting there and then she started choking as she's talking to me about how it began. And like choking on her food or choking up, choking uh, on crying. a glass of water that she was about to drink, choking on her own spit. She hadn't really consumed anything when she was talking and she was choking. So I pretty much looked at her and said, are you okay? Her son said, drink some of the water. And I said, is everything all right? And she goes, they don't want me to tell you anymore. And so I'm thinking, okay, maybe these are the demons talking to her. Wow. Uh, and they don't want to reveal too much because I might start a conversation that could bring her to Christ and they don't want that. So they'd like to wow. shut the conversation. That was my thinking. Yeah. So on the back of my mind, I started praying again. I didn't want to pray out loud because there were people around me who were Wiccans and occultists and all kinds of worldviews. And I didn't necessarily want to turn the attention toward me. I was trying to get to know them <laughs> and talk with them openly and uh, kind of exchange views. So they'd at least listen to my perspective. So I'm praying in the back of my mind, Father, please reveal the truth to her and Satan get thee behind me. Now, as soon as I said that, she said, I see something behind you. <laughs> so I'm thinking this is just getting really awkward. It's either very serendipitous or 
maybe what I'm asking for is happening. He's behind me now. <laughs> he's, he's not in my way. He's moving away from her and he's now. And she said, I see a being, he's leathery. And she started describing this alien-like being and said his name was Carson or something of the sort. So stories like that, where I'd have conversations with people uh, made me very aware that people were troubled by these entities, not just choking on no food, but they would have sleep paralysis. Some of them talked about being attacked by negative entities. Mm -hmm. And there were some of them that said they only did what the spirits told them to do. And I had heard that voice speak to me. So I thought, okay, if there is a spiritual realm and it's able to contact people at will and it can choose who it speaks to. If there are fallen angels speaking to people, giving them information, making them appear psychic or perhaps influencing them, um, people need to know that because if we're hearing messages, there could be children hearing messages. Mm. And as believers, if we don't tell people what is happening, they could be deceived by these beings because mm. If a message is being taught by a spirit, we're taught that in the last days, spirits will deceive many. The teachings of demons, doctrines of demons. So I had these Bible verses going through my head about spirits and their relationship with um, deception, how they can try to turn people away from Christ. Mm -hmm. So all in all, I'd say that that was the end. But my daughter had experiences as well where she would see black shadowy beings in the bathroom. And she came into my room and said, they're back. They're in the bathroom. And so I'd go into the bathroom and pray and, you know, say, you need to leave in the name of Jesus. You are not welcome here and kind of equipped her with the tools for what to do if she encounters the demonic realm. Now, where we run into a little problem is whenever I speak with someone about UFOs, they're usually very quick to say that it can't be a spiritual thing. Their physical craft. Um, if you think that they have anything to do with the supernatural, you're just closed minded. Hmm. So we have groups like East Eddy Ranch and James Gilliland where there are hundreds of people that go visit places and they have sightings of orbs and they have messages. The messages are always very new age. And when you bring up the question yeah. of Christ, they'll say, oh, we believe in Christ as well. Christ was a good teacher is what most of these UFO, very deep into the UFO phenomenon, people will say, the ones that actually have communication with the beings. Yeah, that's, that's Christ I just is a did good a video. Teacher. I just did a video on realism. Um, have yes. you ever heard of realism? I did. When I did the two days of research, I heard of almost everything out there under the sun. I watched several videos, read websites about what they could be. So I'd heard about realism. Uh, yep. A woman who said, uh, also a woman who channeled Ramtha, the spirit of Ramtha, many different <laughs> takes on the whole, you know, spirits coming down and presenting themselves as anything other than fallen angels yeah. to get people to think a certain way. But the big issue is, there's a lot of disagreement over what these are mm -hmm. and whether they're safe. So I think in time, it won't even be an issue of whether they exist. We already have the government acknowledging that there have been sightings. And I've talked with pilots here in Texas that have seen them on radar. Uh, very wow. sane people that gain nothing. They don't want attention. They've seen it. For some of them, it's destroyed their life. And I'll start right there with the how it can take you off track. I myself was thrown very off track in my research because I began to meet up with people I won't give too much information being I'm married and I have to respect the wishes of my spouse. But when you start talking to people, especially people of the opposite sex about things you've had in common and you start to keep it a secret from your spouse, you can develop relationships with people that are completely yeah. inappropriate and go down a path that is destructive. You could end up losing your marriage. There are many people at these conferences that meet up with people they can identify with. They form a relationship and they call themselves soulmates. Wow. They leave their spouse behind. Um, they feel like they've found the one. Um, some of them feel like the UFOs have led them to get, kind of forced them to come together, that it's meant to be that the universe has called them together. So a lot of it leads people into areas of the occult and in short, turning away from Christ. Mm -hmm. Because Christ is a good teacher, but in their eyes, he's not the son of God, nor is he the way, right. the truth. He's one of many ascended masters. Mm -hmm. So they're teaching a pretty new age philosophy and I know there are teachings in several spiritual circles that the UFOs actually play a role in the end times. The Muslims believe that white lights will light the faces of true believers, wow. that the 12th Imam will basically take power from Christ and he'll become the ruler. So when we think about the Bible and in instances where lights came from the sky, a light, you know, knocked Paul off his horse or Saul, mm -hmm. um, there are so many stories of lights. I think it's the same entities 
in some cases, but it's a spiritual thing. And those of us who have seen them up close and have had contact with them know that. For example, if you're in a relationship with someone that you shouldn't be and you're texting them, even a platonic relationship, male, female, and your spouse knows nothing about it, you send a text to this person with the first text you send, you see an orb show up. You send another text, another orb shows up. So there's a direct correlation between sin committed and you see more of them. Really? So, so, so the more, you found this correlation or how, how do you know this? I, I have discovered this directly without telling too much, but the, we'll put it this way. The more that you, the less you do that God would have you do, the more you turn away from him or turn your back to what he says to do, the more you see. Initially, you may see them when you're doing everything fine. You could be following the will of God, being obedient to what he says, confessing sins daily, you know, trying to do your best and grow in Christ and bring others to Christ. And you might see them because it's great bait. They get you interested. They get you hooked. And then the deception comes in. So I always see it as a chessboard. And that's one of their very well thought out chess pieces. If we can't win this person through this means, let's show them the spiritual realm. It's candy. We'll get their interest and pull them in and wow. slowly start to deceive them. So, I mean, I could go on for hours talking about people I've met with and experiences they've had and my own experiences. But in short, the phenomenon is very real. Eventually, more people will start to see it. Like I said, the government has already admitted that UFOs or UAPs are real. And there are many people that struggle with seeing things from the other realm and not knowing what to do about it because they can have negative, fairly negative experiences. I'm not sure if the abductions really happen, if they're able to be transported or it's a trick of the mind because with hypnotism, I would never allow myself to be hypnotized. I was always afraid that someone could plant a seed in my mind that I didn't want there. And I wanted to be fully aware of what I was doing. So I wouldn't allow it, but through activities like regression, there can be seeds planted that create false memories, yeah. but you could also have spirits who, if they're able to communicate with people, they can plant ideas. They can paint a reality that's much different than what truth that needs to be told. Um, in short, it's just a grand deception and it yes. lines up perfectly with what yeah, the Bible you know, says. That, that reminds me, um, because I, I think, I think um, it's almost limiting to say, well, it happens in a certain way. Like I used to believe it was primarily visions, and I still do believe it's it's primarily visions that happen in the spiritual realm. Like we are, the Bible calls us vessels, right? We're hosts. So right. these spiritual entities can inhabit us. If if something like that were to happen, they can put us into a a type of trance or or a type of uh, vision. But I also uh, just recently um, someone told me that they had their their deceased son come and came right up to them and hugged him and, st and her deceased son started telling her things that were not biblical and and she realized it was demonic but he she said i could feel him i hugged him i could feel his heartbeat he was physical and so that that blew my mind right there because i i can i can understand that these things not only can invoke these visions, but they can also be manifest themselves physically. So it's, it's really Absolutely. difficult to know. That person would be one of many. I myself have had not only seeing a spirit, but having one walk into the room and interact with me physically. I won't say exactly what happened, but it was physical to the point where if I had no Bible background, no knowledge of the fact that there is a supernatural war going on mm -hmm. for souls, so to speak, I would think it's, an ascended master it's an entity who's higher than me and i'll this may sound a bit dark but just to be honest what the being did was almost making a contract with me i will give you this if you do this wow and the offer was made he left right through the window and i knowing the difference between right and wrong had a choice to make he didn't ask for blood or sacrifice but if you don't talk to people about christ if you do making an offer. So I'm thinking in my mind, is this what happened in the days of old with witches? They were presented with demonic beings that would give them powers because if they can manifest physically, they can cause signs and wonders to appear in the sky. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You have anime that mm -hmm. children watch where there are these power balls that can be thrown and inserted into people in a cosmic war that happens. You have the Hindu religion that teaches in the ancient times, there were flying beings that had wars with each other. So if they're presenting themselves as enlightened or more evolved than us and here for our good, they could really cause people to make decisions that are not going to lead them in a direction that God 
has for them very subtly too not not just like hey do you want to be evil they're they're like very subtle in how they how they present these things that's why we have to be in, in the word constantly and how I guess having these experiences gives me more of an appreciation for people that I meet that have also had them. Because initially, if I'd heard about this and had no backing, I think these people are crazy. They're either trying to get attention. You hear about celebrities that mention having had um, intimate relations with ghosts or having mm-hmm. seen ghosts that were, you know, the dead grandmother. This, I know people who were raised in the church, so to speak, and have seen deceased relatives. Yeah. I have a relative my, of my own that shortly before he died, he said that he was seeing a woman come to him every night, beautiful woman. So the Bible tells us about spirits being able to take on a physical form. Hmm. So not all of us experience this necessarily. I've had friends that say, I'd love to have something like that happen. I'd love to see a piece of the other side because then it would increase my <laughs> faith. I Careful what you wish for. Oh, yes, <laughs> it sounds like what I asked around the age of 19. <laughs> but uh, there is a problem because if you do see it, that realm is pretty wise and able to deceive. I mean, if you think about someone who has no background in knowing that spirits are capable of deception, they've had someone close to them die, say an uncle whom they loved. And then the next night, the uncle is walking across the room, comes over and hugs yeah. them, has yeah. a conversation with them about how everything's okay. He's now in the light. <laughs> everything's fine and then you find out that the uncle was living an extremely dark lifestyle never knew christ then the individual would say well he's fine everybody goes to heaven my uncle's fine so it doesn't matter how we live it doesn't matter what we believe in everybody's going to the same place so it creates a very much every door is a path to a place that we're all headed when christ taught the exact opposite there's one gate and that's him no one comes to the father but through me there are many ways he draws us in he can draw people from various worldviews and many different strategies he uses because he loves people more than we do. But the fact that all these ghosts and entities and spirits are teaching that everything's fine. There's no such thing as sin. Everything's just an experience. And we learn from our experiences. And, you know, you have every lifetime to do it over again. You can be reincarnated and <laughs> get it right the third time, the fourth time. So you ruined a couple marriages. Maybe the next lifetime you'll get it right on the first one. That seems to be a recurrent <laughs> theme. You're going to have a second chance. Yeah. Everything everything evil teaches, there's going to be a second chance. Don't worry about it. Don't work with God about this stuff. Not that we, you know, you have you have time. And, and exactly. that's, that's, that's the overarching theme. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So it pretty much uh, blinds people to the fact that they have sinned. Because the first step to freedom is realizing that, hey, I'm not perfect. But there is perfection offered through Christ, and I just need to reach out and grab it. If yeah. we don't think that there's sin, we're never going to look for a savior. Right. And the whole intent of Christ was to come and save the world. So if we're saying that there's no sin, we're told outrightly the truth is not in us. Right. So with the UFO culture and the conferences I've been to, there are a wide variety of people. I do have many uh, fellow believers that go to these conferences, and they have their booths. Um, Aaron Judkins has written many books and talked to people and educated them about the reality of the phenomenon. Um, many people, Joe Jordan, I know many believers that have either had experiences or know people that have had experiences, but it's the people that don't understand the deceptive factor that I'm concerned about because it's tricky. I mean, if you don't have the knowledge that they're not all good, mm-hmm. and I know that you know, they call, they teach that there is dark in there, but they kind of play the bad cop, good cop game. <laughs> uh, yes, there are spirits. Some of them are dark entities. But we're not exactly able to discern whether they're dark or light if we don't know what truth is. Right. Everything can be good. I mean, if I were a demon trying to deceive someone or turn them away from Christ, the last thing I'm going to tell them is, hey, I'm a fallen angel. Right. Hey, I would probably put a mask on and make them think I'm something that I'm not. And every culture has had experiences with these beings. Native American cultures talk about the star people from the sky and experiences that their medicine men had with the star people giving them knowledge. Um, African cultures speak about beings coming from the sky. So there's a cultural element where many, we'll say uh, people groups, have experiences with these beings. If you think about animism. Gnomes, fairies. Exactly, fairies. Orishas, spirits coming from the water, um, the whole divine feminine, (laughs) uh, all of that is coming from the same troop. Mm -hmm. It all points people away from Christ. So where the danger lies is that people will not know the truth if they're taught by these beings, because the beings don't want them to know the truth. (laughs) So 
I think as believers, the light side of things is if we're open and we talk about our experiences, we pray, we listen to people who have these types of experiences, we can educate people or at least pray against what's happening and see positive change because there are things happening that you won't hear about on CNN. Yeah. There are children every day. There are children that are having experiences with orbs. I won't say the name of our work, but we had an instance a couple months ago where we saw an orb on the playground oh, really? and you should have heard the conversations that were had about what Multiple it could be people saw this and you think yes and you think about the media and how they play into it we've got so many ufo movies out there that when a group of children or adults sees a light in the sky the first thing they're going to think is oh et the ufos are here so so and how many i'm just curious i'm not going to ask any specific questions but what how many people saw this thing i would say about 20. oh my wow yes, about and it wasn't as impactful as stories I've heard about other places, the Rwanda, Rwanda I think it was Rwanda school incident or yep. some, there was a school where children saw, allegedly saw a craft come down. Now, granted, this was just a light in the sky, pink. Mm -hmm. But I remember looking at it thinking, oh my goodness, they're back. And now they're trying to get the attention of younger people. Hmm. And with all the things that are out there in the cartoon world included, there are lots of occult themes. Every book you do, when you go to the library, how many books are there on witchcraft, Harry Potter, right, right <laughs> spiritualism. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like everyone is indoctrinated to believe that these beings or entities or powers, some people will just call them energies are here to help us evolve. Yeah. When in reality, they're here to devolve us. <laughs> they want to draw yeah. us away from our greatest good. So, there's some real discernment needed. And I think if we talk about it, yes, we risk sounding crazy. I've myself have wondered, you know, how worth it is it to talk about this? I'm going to be painted as strange, fringe. My real mission should be to, you know, be teaching the gospel and doing what God's called me to do. But if I've seen something and I'm worried that others might see it, I'm the type who likes to speak about it openly because if the enemy is playing games, keeping quiet about them doesn't educate your team. I see yeah. us all as a team. So if I see the other side making a move, I mean, what does a football team do? <laughs> they talk. Right. Here's what's yeah. going on with the other team. Here are the moves they're making. And I've been lucky to, I grew up in a place where there was a lot of diversity. I had friends as a young child of many different religions. And so I'm comfortable talking with people who don't necessarily agree with me on things. I was talking to someone last year. She admitted that she was a witch. She'd been trained in witchcraft. She believed very strongly in feminine power and she spoke with energies she could read tarot cards hmm. and I was telling her about my experiences and I told her look these are actually spirits and I know what you believe I respect that you have had experiences that lead you to believe this way but this is what Christ taught hmm. and she was with her partner at the time they were in a same-sex relationship and her partner looked at her and it, her partner said to her I think Stacy's telling the truth because wow. I told her what I'd experienced. And she said, that's exactly what happened to us. So if we speak openly and we actually respect people enough to listen to them and say, look, I'm not going to speak down about you or tell you what your sin is. We all know that the Bible does not condone witchcraft, but looking instead at the person's heart, you're loved by God. Tell people outrightly you are loved more than you could know. Yeah. Instead of focusing on their sin, they know that what they're doing doesn't align with Judeo-Christianity. Looking at them the way God would look in pursuit, you're valuable. Tell me your perspective. Here's what Christ says. I always tell people, this is what Christ says. I understand that you might think I'm closed-minded, but this is what Christ taught. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about Christ? And the interesting thing is they always want to ask me, well, which church do you go to? Because they love to put you in a box. Because right. the minute they put you in a box, they can, oh, you're part of that church. Or, oh, you're part of this church. Or, oh, you're Catholic. And look what the Pope has done. And, oh, look at the priest that is molesting <laughs> children. If they put you in a box, it's easy to dismiss you. But if you say, look, I don't really belong in a box. I'm a follower of Christ. And this is what Christ says. Then they are troubled. They repeatedly ask me, tell us what church you go to. And I'm thinking, do you want to come visit? <laughs> Would you really like to know? Uh, I said, I don't follow any man. I'm following what Christ taught. And we got into a conversation with the two women about Christ. And they said, oh, he sounds like a really good guy. We know that he's good. And I said, okay, he's good. But you're telling me that he's a liar. You missed, he said you missed, he was the you only You take one O out of that. He's, he's good. He's <laughs> exactly. He's good. He's good. <laughs> exactly. You're telling me he's a liar. So he was telling us that he's the only way, but you're saying that he lied. And they kind of looked at me and said, I'm not trying to disrespect you, but if he says something, knowing his nature and he's the only man that is not in the grave, 
only world leader that has risen from the dead, when he says he's the way, the truth, and life, and tells me what I should think about these beings that are contacting me, I take it seriously. And they were kind of dumbfounded. <laughs> they walked away, but I love that they admitted she's telling the truth. I mean, that was I thought wow. that was pretty respectful, being that we're from different worldviews and we were able to have a conversation. Um, but the bottom line is, yes, this is really happening. So when you hear about UFOs, yes, there could be people that make up stories. Yes, there could be things that are completely outlandish, but there's also the real components. There are real experiences happening every day. Um, sometimes sleep paralysis, which I still think could be physical, but there are also real vision-like experiences, contacts with these energy orbs. I mean, you can go to any website where they see them and see what messages they send. Mm. I know there's a man in... Um, Italy, Antonio Erzi, who claims that he receives messages from Christ. Wow. Okay. Doesn't exactly teach what the Bible teaches, but no. <laughs> he, does, he has video recorded these. He has a huge following of people. They have seminars where thousands of people pay to come see him and hear the downloaded messages. Um, he gets his information from a man who apparently has experienced stigmata. He sees the UFOs and blood comes out of his hand. So they have kind of a Catholic leaning. Um, but wow. there are people all around the world who are having experiences in Sweden. There are people tape recording them. And there's also a group called the Star International Group, where they teach that these are higher beings that are coming for our good. And they're eventually going to contact everyone and lead us into world peace. So while we're sitting here on the sidelines thinking, OK, this is all hogwash. We have the government now saying, yes, they're real. But we don't know what they are because they don't move like the things that we've created. They're not anything that could possibly be physical they move beyond the speed of anything that we know of. Right. They've been seen on radar because spiritual can manifest as physical. It can be picked up on radar once it is physical. Mm -hmm. um, yep. They're contacting people, high level pilots, military personnel have talked with them. And then you have <laughs> people who admit that they contact the beings regularly. Yeah. 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 That we have an issue here and we're told in the last days, there'll be a great deception. Right. It lines up perfectly mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. prophecy. Yeah. What does the Bible say? Unless there comes falling away. Second Thessalonians <laughs> two three. Oh, yes. Don't don't let anybody deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until there is a rebellion. A rebellion occurs. This is the New International Version, and and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man of sin, and that right. man is doomed to destruction. And so there, there's going to be something that comes comes that comes completely. And, you know, th this this could only be the beginning of it, you know. There could be something much, much greater even that's coming. But we know this this appears to be something that was very subtle. And, you know, and, and this is a, a little rabbit trail. I'm not sorry if, if I'm completely, um, keep your story. I, I want to hear, hear the rest of it. But the, uh, one, one, the forums and stuff that I follow are constantly saying, oh, you know, these things, they're, they're trying to keep their distance because they're scared of us. That's a bunch of baloney because they are trying to reveal themselves. Why would they be flashing? What is the use of a light on a UFO in space? They're, they're flashing at us. They're trying to get our attention. They're, they have all these, these lights and stuff on them. They, they're going zig and zig back and forth. What's the first thing you would do if you were trying to hide? Well, you would flip your, uh, your you out of phase with reality, <laughs> number one, but you would turn all your lights off, number two, and you wouldn't move around so much. It's obvious to me these things are trying to be seen, and these are trying right. to get our attention so we can uh, they can do something someday. Anyway, exactly. Then there's also the issue with uh, movies that are coming out, the Eternals or Marvel type movies with beings that are a little fancier than us. They have some capabilities that are beyond ours. That lines up with what these entities are doing. So if one of the little balls of light were to suddenly shape shift into a human form and teach you something, perhaps they teach you. We put you here. We seeded life on Earth. You're a grand experiment. Yeah. Um, we took some of your people a while back. Yeah. Some of you talked about a rapture happening. That's hogwash. Jesus was just one of us. He was an alien too. <laughs> uh, there could be room for mass confusion. And yeah. the Pope has talked about how aliens are real. <laughs> yeah, and he has his own so, telescope too, the the Lucifer exactly. telescope. Exactly. Um, almost every worldview, like I said, has a place for these in their narrative be it hindu religion any religion i can think of has a place for these lights in the sky some muslims call them jinn fallen angels yep. there's actually a gentleman on facebook i'm friends with who had his i think had a sighting in iraq where he was with two other people in a car and a green light appeared in the sky and his 
I think mother-in-law turned to his father and said, oh, this is appearing to tell us that what he said is true because he'd been teaching them about the Bible. So there's also some confusion with, okay, there are these lights. <laughs> are any of them actually good? Because he maketh his angels flames of fire. It doesn't say they're all good angels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when I think fire, I think that would be a perfect description for someone who's maybe not, you know, of the 21st century, what they would call it fire. Right. Because they're essentially fire in the sky. Right. And can right. they manifest a physical? Yes. I've actually seen one here in Dallas where I was with my husband. We're driving down the road. I did see two military helicopters with the, I'm not very familiar with the lingo, but the two propellers or two blades, the double choppers, I'll call it, uh, two of them. And there was a UFO on the right side of the road that moved unlike any I'd seen. It was actually going in and out of our reality, cloaking itself. And this was in broad daylight, a silverish disc. So I thought maybe this is one of theirs. It's physical, <laughs> but it could very well be something that's not. And there was something shaky going, something strange was going on. And I know to many people, they think it's just baloney, but there are real hard conversations going on in government about them and what they are. Uh, many of the organizations we have exist to gather information about them. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, when you think about it, if you have someone high up who's in a level of authority that can make decisions for any nation, and these beings reveal themselves to that person, we're told in scripture that they come to the kings of the earth, um, could they influence a leader to the point where they're making choices for a nation that are actually dictated by the beings? Mm -hmm. um, so we get into some dangerous territory and then there's the element of people just not knowing which ones are good, which ones are bad. I tend to believe that if you're not sure, you shouldn't be listening to a spirit anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly Truth right. has already been revealed by Christ. If God really wants you to know something, he'll probably say, crack open your Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything you need to know is there. But in the last days, when we're already in turmoil, if we add these beings to the mix, think about how confused people could become. Mm -hmm. And then when you have leaders that say, look, we have footage, we're going to go ahead and declassify now. We're going to show you some of the actual conversations that have been had with these beings. And you have someone in front of a television station seeing this orb turn into a full-figured entity and it begins teaching masses. They're not really equipped with what to think. Wow, yeah. I've never seen this. There's a light turning into a person. It looks like a god. Right. It's higher than me. It's more powerful than me. I need to listen to it. This is magic. So you'd have all the world views uniting under the fact that this is something higher than us. We can't fight against it. I mean, who can make war with the beast? Could be speaking of a government that has a lot of power, but mm -hmm. one that's influenced by beings as well. And I know I'm making a lot of speculative comments here, but the way that I can see things moving is the beings are real. And they're here to influence our thought process, our decision making, and try to turn people away from Christ is the mm -hmm. biggest way to put it. Right. And when you get into Bible verses about spirits coming from the mouth of the dragon that look like frogs, a lot of these alien drawings look pretty frog-like, amphibious. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I've always found that really interesting. And people that I've met have said that they've seen beings that look like the typical gray alien. I myself have not seen a gray alien, a green alien, any of those just spirits and ufos and orbs mm -hmm. but there's a lot going on where regardless of whether you think what people are saying is true or is not it's changing their lives it's changing their worldviews, right. and it's real 100 percent real yeah. so the, the, the government question, has a, hasn't told us everything but the question <laughs> that's also, often asked often asked in the forums is how is this going to change religion once they find out it, it's not i mean it might for some people but a lot of people but it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't. It we should shouldn't because it's stuff. Exactly. If you understand what Christ taught, he knew that there were there was a spiritual realm. I mean, he cast demons out of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's a demon? Yeah, fallen angel. If he yeah. casts it out, it must be something that can yeah. move through the air, enter into a pig, <laughs> and mm -hmm. throw it off a cliff, or cause it to commit suicide. If there are people that have suicidal thoughts and they're being influenced by dark beings, yeah, they're kind of doing the same thing they did to the herd of pigs uh, causing destruction because the aim of the enemy is to kill steal and destroy yep. and the whole thought of religion i've heard people espouse to oh there won't be any religion anymore but in my opinion it actually supports everything the bible teaches because it teaches that there is a dark side <laughs> hmm. there is a light side there is a cosmic war so to speak and christ has already won the war mm -hmm. but we're to fight against these things mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. when we see them we shouldn't be listening to any messages they teach we should be 
telling others the truth so that yeah. when they're presented with them, they know how to be, how to behave, what to do. I think about my own children when they were younger and began walking to school, I was concerned about them being kidnapped. I knew there were people with bad motives that could be looking for children. So I told them, look, if you see a car pull up, it might be a person that has good intentions, but they're also bad choices that can be made. There could be somebody that's trying to kidnap you and you probably won't see me again. They could do you harm. So if we just tell everybody, oh, the lights are all good. They're all here for our good. What then happens if these are malevolent entities that are here with a pretty dark agenda? Yeah. They deceive people. So the good news is we as, as believers, the beings aren't afraid of people. They're afraid of us because we have the truth. We have right. the one thing that they don't want people to know. And I noticed when I came out and started talking the truth or speaking the truth and made a choice to turn against some of the sin I was participating in, I saw a lot less of them. I like to tell myself they're kind of angry. They're not going to show themselves because why would they want me to have footage? <laughs> really supporting my worldview, probably not in their best interest, but I've already seen that side um, of the enemy's camp. So I kind of feel that as believers, they're terrified of us. It's not because we're special. It's because we have the Holy Spirit within us. Right, right. The power that raised Christ from the dead is terrifying to them because yeah. they know that it is the highest power and they have no legal right to touch a Christian. Could they influence them? Absolutely. But there's not anything they can do without permission. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, they're terrified that people will find out the truth. That's the last thing they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we're speaking the truth about who they are, they wear a mask. Um, it doesn't make them very happy. So absolutely, that would be one important thing to know. They don't want people to know the truth. And I'm noticing a lot of times on the, the media, although they may have good intentions to reveal the news, there's a real push to put people in boxes lately. You know, these, this is a right wing agenda. These are anti-vaxxers. These are to make anything that doesn't look like it lines up with mainstream look right. evil. Look bad. So it's almost like we put people in boxes they're taking it to the point where anything that could be considered good is now painted as evil mm -hmm. so if we have people that are speaking against the lights and telling what they really are eventually they're going to be the people that are closed-minded they're evil they're keeping us from progressing we should be moving forward as a species these beings are enlightening us they're teaching us peace they're telling us to put away our weapons they're trying to unite us and we don't need all that spiritual stuff there is no sin religion is pretty primitive we don't need it anymore so we have a battle of worldviews going on and the beings are obviously fighting on the side of satan right. <laughs> this yeah. is the simplest way to put it so yes it's real <laughs> yes it's absolutely real when was the last time i guess i should ask or should i ask when, when that you saw these things socked or saw <laughs> so, so, so. I did at one point when I first began seeing them I went out in the backyard hoping they'd show up I don't really do that anymore if they show up I will try to catch them on camera <laughs> just to prove my point but the last time I saw one would be probably months ago when myself and other children saw one but oh, that's they're right. much rarer at this point I have it's been probably months they're far and few in between whereas before it was every week wow. multiple sightings a day and some of the people I know would see hundreds of them in the sky. Um, and these people were having issues with depression, suicide. So they finally came to the realization that these are probably demonic beings that are influencing them. Wow. Uh, they were actually terrified of them. I've never been afraid of them. Uh, but at the same time, only because I know they're terrified of Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you're speaking truth, there's not much that you need to worry about. <laughs> It's the deception that should worry us that we need yeah. to make sure that we are in alignment with what God teaches because they're teaching the exact opposite. Yeah. They would love to be gods. They've always painted themselves as gods. They're actually the gods of the Old Testament. Yeah. <laughs> the very yeah. ones that were worshipped that people cut themselves and cried out. In, in Egypt and yeah, in, in the, yeah, the, the Sumerians and the, um, exactly. yeah, exactly. The same signs and wonders, throwing a stick onto the ground and watching it become a serpent. I mean, there's some spiritual manifesting into the physical um they're nothing new it's the same group presenting themselves in a different light back yeah. then they were gods to be worshipped and they still are in some worldviews um ancestors high ascended masters but now they're presenting themselves as enlightened beings who put us here because satan has always wanted to take glory for himself and teach mm -hmm. that he is god 
is and that we can be gods as well. So it's the same story, just over a and over repackaged. Story. Exactly. And always, comes as a, always comes as a, de- a deception too. Like just like mm-hmm. in the Garden of Eden, he was a, a snake, right? Because Eve understood that. Well, she didn't understand how a snake could talk and it would intrigued her. Well, the th- same thing, same story is happening now. We are intrigued by this knowledge that could come to us, just like the knowledge of the tree of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now we have the knowledge of, of what is the uni- what's in the universe. Anybody would want that, right? Well, the, the knowledge is coming to us in a form of a deception, a mask, just as it happened in the Garden of Eden. And it's up to us to, to push it away and say, hey, no, we're not going to do that. But we, we know that through prophecy, through the Bible, that this is going to happen. When I think back to the story of Adam and Eve and the snake, I always look at the Hebrew nakash, the Hebrew word, enlightened one, shining enlightened one. And I'm thinking, okay, the spirit that I saw, maybe he wasn't shining, but the voice I heard sure presented himself as a powerful being who was loving, who would be easy to follow. Could it have been malevolent? Absolutely. And if I didn't have the knowledge, knowledge is power. It saves people from destruction. Uh, I could have been deceived by the voice. If I didn't know better, it could have come back. It could have started training me. It could have made me believe or do any number of things. Hmm. I mean, we have religions that have been started by spirits uh, speaking to someone and giving them knowledge. So we're dealing with something that's a little far beyond us as far as wisdom, because they've been here longer than we have, obviously. They've walked amongst the fiery stones Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. with the creator. They made a willful decision to disobey, knowing and having walked with God. Um, and now they're here with us. I mean, they were cast down to earth. So, and it does talk about in the Bible how they're moving to and fro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's talking about the, the guardian the cherubim, cherubim, right? Uh, Ezekiel exactly. twenty-eight fourteen. You were anointed as a guardian cherub. So I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God, walking among the fiery stones. Very fascinating, yeah. Exactly. And where it also gets kind of interesting is when you have people meeting together, to have these sightings, the one of the biggest ways they say to increase the number of sightings is to see more of them. And they teach, if you'd like to see a UFO, here's what you need to do. A, clear your mind. That's B, join me. hands, go out on the grass and let's all make a circle. <laughs> let's meditate together. So they're unifying people under kind of a new age, Eastern religion, yoga, mm-hmm. meditation. Mm-hmm. Once our minds are clear and we have peaceful intentions, the beings will come. So it's setting them up for a belief that they're good and they only come to us once we decide to be nice (laughs) and get along with one another. And they'll bring world peace when we know as believers, there won't be peace until Christ comes. Um, So they're definitely steering us into a direction that long ago, people might think that's impossible, new world order, we all have (laughs) our own minds. But when you have these beings coming and uniting people and teaching a message and Everyday people like you and I, when we see something magical appear in the sky and turn into a being that can teach us, it's pretty influential. If yeah. you don't have any background knowledge or any previous training, that becomes your worldview. Whatever they say has to be truth because they are, I mean, they appear out of more nowhere. than us. Yeah, apparently. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have the psychic ability where they can be telling you things that only you know because demons can cloak themselves. They can travel around. They can see your activities. They can tell you what you did last night at five o'clock, six o'clock. So if something were to suddenly appear that had powers, unlike what most people are used to, just imagine what it would do to the average Joe who believes that evolution is true and that there's just a naturalistic point of view. And now we have these magical beings coming. Hey, maybe these are the ones that put us here. There's no God. These are the ones that put us here. They are the gods. So it's not a UFO issue. It's a worldview issue. Right, right. As mm-hmm. teaching, they're spirits that are actually teaching people, mm-hmm. so deceiving them essentially. So it's a it will never cease to be an interesting topic to me. I don't seek them actively, but I do understand their intentions, which yeah. is why I make an attempt to tell as many people as I can what they are, so that they're not deceived. Because if we put the word out there first, just like when I tell my kids, "Hey, there could be someone out there that tries to grab you and pull you into their car. They may have they may offer you candy." They're going to know when they start walking, oh, there's a car. We were already warned that this could be evil. So it kind of front loads the information so that they're less likely to be deceived. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing the Bible does. Don't trust every spirit. It's educating us so that we're not naive. And we're all ignorant, (laughs) unfortunately, (laughs) 
Um, it's an easy bracket to fall into. So when it comes to things from the supernatural realm, anyone can be deceived, any one of us. Um, I love the verse in the Bible that says, even the elect would be deceived if it were possible. If it were possible. And I'd like to linger on that, if it were possible, because because of the blood of Christ, the enemy has no hold on us. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if it were possible, they could deceive us mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. the truth because it's from another realm. I mean, it's yep. it's what we're made of. We're made in the image of God. So when something spiritual speaks to our spirits and manifests itself, it just paints a whole new worldview. And as Christians, I don't think this would sh this should shock us. Everything that we're seeing and that we will see is already written about in Scripture. I mean, yeah, there's no new there's no new thing. New. Someone says, right? Nothing new. I want I want exactly. to bring that one verse up. Um, test the spirits. First John four one. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets are have gone out into this world. So I, I think that's going to become even even more relevant as time goes on. Test the spirits because that's, right. you never know. You never know. And then we have uh, people seeking to have, you know, itching ears that they want scratched. And many of the new age teachers will tell people what they want to hear. Your mother died. She's fine. We need to hear that. We need to know she's at peace. So they'll give us whatever we want to hear. There's no hell. Don't worry about it. They tell us what appeases us because that's a way to please us and bring us into their worldview. When in reality, we're taught, hey, there's dark and there's light. Mm -hmm. There is a danger, but there's a way out. So mm -hmm. uh, a big facet of knowing the truth is realizing that we need Christ. Right. Because if we don't realize that, that makes the enemy pretty happy. <laughs> so <laughs> speaking the truth is not always easy. It's not always fun. Right. But I think the positive in it is, yes, there's a dark side, but Christ has already overcome the dark side. Absolutely. It's a lost battle. They've lost entirely. So the issue is, can yeah. we mask them? <laughs> right, we need right, to be unmasking right. them so that others are not deceived. Because I'm certainly glad that I had neighbors that invited me to meet and read the Bible, because had they not done that, I would have been thoroughly deceived. By this point, I probably would have joined a UFO cult somewhere right, <laughs> and right. be teaching who knows what. Mm -hmm. And it certainly wouldn't line up with the words of Christ. It would be a lot more new age. Mm -hmm. And we're all one. Love and peace are great things, but truth is the highest. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Where there's truth, that embodies love as well, because truth is the highest. I mean, God is light in him. There's no darkness. So there's no room for lies. And the enemy's all about lies. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. If it's a half lie, it's a lie. <laughs> Do you have um, any resources that you, you personally uh, use or any books that you've written or a website you, people can go to to uh, get to your resources if they wanted to? Um, I haven't written nonfiction. I did it in the form of fiction. I did write a book uh, a couple of years ago. I thought, you know what, I better start writing down some things that happened because at my age, I'm almost 50. I will forget everything. <laughs> so I penned a book and I was initially going to make it free. I had a colleague that said, why do you do everything for free? <laughs> so I put it on Amazon. It's called Meeting at Midnight. We'll say something that was inspired by a true story. <laughs> <laughs> That's one place people can go. Other than that, Joe Jordan has a fabulous uh, website, CE4 mm -hmm. Research, where he's interviewed lots of people. I actually encountered him during that two-day window where I was researching. I clicked on one of his videos and heard a story of a woman who was deeply troubled by what she'd seen. I think Joyce Myers, um, she'd seen a pink orb hover over, I think it was her baby's crib. Um, destruction was wrought in her life because of the UFOs, but she came to know Christ much later. Um, I really admire his work because he has allowed people to tell their stories and how they've come to the truth. So they've kind of unmasked the enemy themselves. So for every move that the dark side has, God's already got one up on him. So where there are people being deceived, he's also unveiling the truth so that we can help people. Just like back in the days of the disciples, Satan has been around for a while, but he already equipped people with the Holy Spirit who could go around and put out Satan's flames and bring people to the truth. So did, did you say, did you say Joyce Meyer, the televangelist? Um, did I get the name wrong? I may have it totally wrong. I should ask Joe Jordan, but it's not Joyce Myers, the televangelist, but I believe her name was Joyce. I'd have to ask him for the name, but it's in his book. How is I know that? he's written two really what? good books. Yeah. <laughs> no, not Joyce Myers. But Laura Maxwell is also a spiritualist who was having encounters. Her mother ended up committing suicide. She would communicate with the spirits. She was, we'll say to put it lightly, molested by the spirits. 
You know, there's yeah. a lot of that happening. I almost did a video about it, and I stopped because it was so weird. But it there's is weird. a lot is of that happening. Right. Still and most people that. that have that happen don't talk about it because they know it's outlandish. It is strange. It doesn't make you <laughs> seem like a very sane person to talk about a ghost coming into your room and having its way with you. Right. And then you have the added element of people who love attention making up stories when in reality, <laughs> spirits can do quite a bit, uh -huh. uh, including uh -huh. manifest physically. And we think about uh, Lot and his family, as soon as the men saw the angels that had mm -hmm. appeared at the door, they wanted to have intercourse with them. So <laughs> they were physical <laughs> enough to be desirable, uh, but the angels themselves blinded them. So That's crazy. it gets really interesting. Yeah. And I know it's difficult because this is a realm that some people don't like to delve into. My own husband's very practical and he says, just stay away from it. <laughs> it's craziness. <laughs> it doesn't draw people to Christ because it's out there. But at the same time, if this is the tool that the enemy is using to deceive people, exactly. staying quiet about it helps him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because exactly. then he's the one doing the teaching instead of us doing the unveiling and unmasking. So well, see, that was far... the thing that was the thing that brought me back into this because I've I've been I've been researching this for about, I don't know, 15, 12, 15 years now. And I was I was thinking about it. I was like, for about 10 years I was going I'm not going to touch this. This doesn't help the Bible cause at all. But after the stuff started appearing in the news from uh, Lou Elizondo and all those, the, the, the Blink-182 guy and all, exactly. uh, all this other stuff, I started thinking, okay, all right, all right. I, I Someone has to say something about this because if they exactly. don't, a lot of people are going to be deceived. At least we have to have some resources. We have to have a book, a pamphlet, a, a YouTube channel, something that talks and about this. Otherwise... Exactly. As believers, we should... I'm not saying that we know everything. We're learning just like everyone else, but we have the truth. We should be the ones that are enlightening people. We mm -hmm. have the truth. So it is in the news. It's in popular culture. And my view is that if we don't understand what people are being taught and exposed to, it's more difficult to connect with them and help them understand the truth. If I know nothing about UFOs and they're suddenly on the news and the news is telling us that this is the new religion, mm -hmm. these are gods, they're higher than us. I have just pretty much invalidated Christianity for some people because they think, oh, those Bible believing people, they're not important anymore. We've got something here that taught us where we're from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's appearing in our skies. It's performing magical tricks. Their Bible is invalid. Where's Jesus? Why isn't he appearing and speaking against them? So we need to come out and tell the truth because if we're not speaking truth, where are they getting it from? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's a pretty scary thing when you know the truth and you see the tactics that the enemy is using because it's done in such a way that speaking about it might paint you crazy. It could, I mean, I understand fully well that some people might invalidate me because of some experiences I've had. I'm now in the category of don't listen to her. She's weird. <laughs> I've had friends that I love deeply and said, you have some crazy ideas, but they're interesting. And I can respect that because long ago I would have called them crazy myself. But once you've had the experiences and once people start to experience this, it'd be far better if they were educated about the fact that these beings have been here forever mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. trying to deceive and they're nothing new so unmasking the enemy is kind of what the mission is at this point that i can see is pretty fruitful yeah absolutely well if you don't mind i want to have a little prayer before we uh, before we disembark absolutely father god thank you so much for giving us this time to come together and discuss the future understanding through your word the bible Help us to uh, communicate this in a way that would be fruitful and for uh, spreading the gospel and uh, helping people to see the truth so they can hear the correct gospel and not the false gospel that's been and that's going to be teached through the falling away. God, we love you and we look forward to your soon return and being with you someday. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for your time. Thank you.